stolen money everywhere. In time and space. His thought. Consciousness. A kind of peace of mind. He experiences himself. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Deciphering My Experience. My name is Eric, and I have an interesting story that I want to cover today. <clears throat> Not everything is always doom and gloom, even though I am trying to uh, broaden everybody's horizons and perspectives to what's really going on in the world with directed energy weapons and nefarious plans and conspirators and co-conspirators. But it's, uh, you know, there's also other stuff going on on the planet. Um, but before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I would like to ask everybody to subscribe, like, share, and comment because all of that stuff helps. It, uh, it pumps the algorithm and uh, makes things happen. So please do that. It's uh, very appreciated. I also don't want to forget to remind everybody that the uh, television series Alaska Triangle Season 2, Episode 9, The Mysteries of Ketchikan, is the episode that I am in, and I highly recommend that everybody takes a look at it because I will be chatting about it more in depth. I've been touching on it here and there, but I should probably do uh, some sort of review of that episode and let people know my thoughts on how that production came out uh, versus what it was intended to be. So uh, could be a lot of fun, could be a great chat. But as far as today's conversation goes, I want to bring up... A, a, this little story here about Mr. Ernest Shackleton and his ship, the Endurance. So a lot of you may not know of this person, but if you were in the Antarctic program, Ernest Shackleton matters. And here we have, uh, this is an article from the Scientific American. Legendary shipwreck of Shackleton's Endurance discovered in Antarctic waters. This the discovery of the wreck is a milestone in polar history, says the director of the search for it. And this is written by Tom Metcalf, Live Science on March 9th, 2022. Thanks, Tom. The wreck of the steam yacht Endurance, which famously sank in 1915 during an Antarctic expedition by the polar explorer Ernest Shackleton, has been rediscovered by research, I'm sorry, by searchers using autonomous underwater vehicles. The shipwreck was found at a depth of 9,869 feet beneath West Antarctic's Weddell Sea, according to the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust, which sponsored the search. There's only about four nautical miles, I'm sorry, that's only about four nautical miles south of the location fixed by the ship's captain, Frank Worsley, who used a sextant to record the position of its sinking after several months of the ship being surrounded and eventually crushed by ice. This is a milestone in polar history, the search expedition's director, Menson Bound, said in a statement. We are overwhelmed by our good fortune in having located and captured images of endurance. Shackleton recorded that the ship was crushed by masses of surrounding sea ice in its final weeks, which tipped it over, stove in several planks in the stern, and caused its timbers to groan, crack, and scream. But the nearly found, but the nearly found wreck of the endurance seems remarkably well preserved in spite of its trials. This is by far the finest wooden shipwreck I've ever seen, Bound said. It is upright, well proud of the seabed, intact, and in a brilliant state of preservation. You can even see the name Endurance arced across the stern. The rediscovery is the culmination of years of searching for the wreck of the Endurance, which became famous partly because of the dramatic photographs of its sinking and the astonishing journey of survival that followed. But the wreck is located only a few hundred miles from the coast of Antarctica. The region is often completely covered with sea ice, which has forced previous search efforts to turn back. A team of searchers on board the South African polar research vessel Agulas II finally located the wreck on Saturday, March 5th, by coincidence, the 100th anniversary of Ernest Shackleton's funeral in 1922. 
that's pretty coincidental. We have successfully completed the world's most difficult shipwreck search, battling constantly shifting sea ice, blizzards, and temperatures dropping down to minus 18 degrees Celsius, minus 0.4 Fahrenheit. That's nothing. Um, the search expedition's leader, John Sears, told BBC News, we have achieved what many people said was impossible. The wreck of the Endurance was found by a Saab Sabertooth hybrid underwater vehicle controlled by operators on the Algulus, on the Algulus 2. The robotic vehicles can operate both on a tether or autonomously as they did on the latest search. A lot of folks searching in the water lately. After more than two weeks of searching a predefined search area based on Worsley's original sextant fixes, Algulus 2 spotted the wreck, according to the FMHT. The FMHT notes that the wreck is protected as a historic site and monument under the Antarctic Treaty and said it would not be touched or disturbed in any way while it's being surveyed from the Agulas too. Well, I guess the whole world will just have to trust them on that because that's what they said, huh? <laughs> The search expedition has been fortunate with conditions in the Weddell Sea, which can be notoriously icebound. Last month saw the lowest extent of Antarctic sea ice recorded during the satellite era, which stretches back to the 1970s, the BBC reported. You know, it's just making me think of that last paragraph. According to the Antarctic Treaty, the ship on site says it won't be touched. Everybody talks about all the protections that Antarctica has. The protection is a piece of paper. Nobody's stopping anybody from doing anything. It's such shenanigans. Back to the article. Shackleton used endurance on his third of four expeditions to Antarctica. He had visited the frozen southern continent twice before, from 1901 to 1903, as a subordinate of the polar explorer Robert Falcon Scott, during which time he took part in the first hot air balloon flight from Antarctica, and then from 1907 until 1909, when his team reached the estimated location of the South Magnetic Pole. A team led by Norwegian explorer Roel Admundsen was the first to reach the geographic South Pole on December 14, 1911, a few weeks ahead of a team led by Scott, which ended in tragedy. Shackleton's aim in 1915 was to complete the first was to complete the first complete crossing of the Antarctic continent by dog sled from the Weddell Sea via the South Pole to Ross Island in the Ross Sea. A distance of about 1,800 miles. The endurance was meant to deliver Shackleton and his team to the southern coast of the Weddell Sea for the overland expedition. But the the ship became trapped in the heavy sea ice in October 1915, and the crew abandoned it and moved everything they could onto their camp on the ice floes. After the endurance sank, Shackleton and the other 27 members of his crew attempted to reach land by dog sled and eventually on lifeboats they had rescued from the ship. In April 1915, they reached Elephant Island at the northern tip of the Antarctic Peninsula. Shackleton and five members of the crew then set out in one of the lifeboats through the stormy, freezing seas for a whaling station on the sub-Antarctic island of South Georgia. Shackleton returned to Elephant Island on a rescue ship shortly after, and remarkably, all 28 of his crew survived the treacherous voyage. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the testament to Ernest Shackleton and... Safe like Shackleton is basically uh, the phrase that they use in the South Pole program, the Antarctic program. Safe like Shackleton. And uh, this here is a patch that I got from the program. And I got a couple of these for, I guess they call you being a station saver when you do something profound enough over the course of your shift that you get the uh, the royal nod from management that you're a station saver. They uh, distribute you one of these patches. So I, I got a couple of those, and um, those are some fun stories, but uh, I'm not looking to steal the thunder of Ernest Shackleton today and the fact that his boat was found in such great condition after all of these years. 
I guess I just uh, hold a soft spot in my heart for Shackleton, so I think it's a testament to his efforts and the endurance of the endurance. Oh my goodness, she's back. And uh, for some reason, I feel like someday maybe she'll be better than ever. But who knows? Uh, to dare to dream, I gather. But I hope to uh, be doing more for you folks. I know I've been uh, kind of in the dark as of late. I know everyone's been reaching out to me and trying to make sure that everything's okay. And I assure everybody, everything is fantastic. I just have so much going on. And I had to reprioritize a little things here and there. And been working on stuff and don't worry everything is coming back i'm going to be going to the secret space conference in grafton illinois and i look forward to meeting everybody there and seeing some faces again from the vegas 5d event that i went to in the fall so i think it's going to be great to reconnect with everybody and um, get this ball moving forwards for disclosure let's uh, kick down the walls of compartmentalization and get to the truth in the bottom of things, folks. I'm gonna leave you with some music from Dion Vox once again, who was been kind enough to put together stuff. I had asked her if she can put together music almost like a chicken soup for the soul, but on the SSP mindset. So this is music with intention, and it's, uh, you know, all of her stuff that she's been giving me is just meant to be uh, a bit groovy to the SSP spirit. So just, uh, tuning out with some of that today so long folks have a great day throwing stolen money everywhere in time and space his thoughts consciousness a kind of Teach me to be free Brother, shield me, guide me Healing, teach me what I see Father, praise me, show me Neighbor, teach me what I need Lover, crave me, duly daze me Love me, cause I'm me